What's up, everybody? We're back. Uh, the GM's inconsolable right now. Um, he's crying in the corner because the fighter brawler subclass didn't make it into the 2024 or 5e revised rules. Uh, and he's just really he's just really broken up about the whole situation because he really wanted to play, uh, you know, he just wanted to play Star Platinum as a character. N- not not Jotaro, just Star Platinum. And uh, he I'm just... I'm not crying. Leave <laughs> me alone, bro. Okay, yeah. Well, I was trying... I wasn't trying to name names, I say. But, uh... It's fucked up, man. It, it's a little fucked up. I understand. I understand. We return. We return after a week hiatus. I am here with Isaiah. I was popping. And that's it. Not the brawler. Not the brawler. Not the brawler. <laughs> so, uh... As was alluded to, if anyone saw the tweet, uh, but even if you didn't, yes, it is me and Isaiah, and this will be the case for the foreseeable future, as um, we killed Matt, actually. We, we, we killed him in cold blood. I couldn't take his disagreements anymore, and his fence-sitting, and his ostrich-in-the-sand behavior, uh, so I murdered him with my bare hands. It was the time. It was crazy. Isaiah recorded it. <laughs> it did. <laughs> no one's allowed to see from me. Yeah, for uh, for, uh, for legal reasons, this is a joke. Matt's fine. He's just not going to be around anymore because of, you know, scheduling demons, as it were. And he keeps complaining about this whole needing to sleep thing. I don't... Sounds like horseshit to me, but he keeps bringing it up, so I don't know, I guess. Back in my day, we didn't need sleep. Yeah, I, we it's just... cocaine. Yeah, exactly, and then you go up the hill both ways backwards to school in the snow on a cow, you know? Like, I don't understand what the problem is. Okay, my favorite iteration of that is the Jeff Dunham one, where <laughs> it was, like, having to go get condoms... <laughs> <laughs> he's like, back in my day, we had to walk six miles to get condoms. Both ways, uphill, in the snow, with a bone. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yep. <laughs> okay. I like it. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and also, for those anyone curious, because I don't think we ever, it occurred to me, I don't think we ever mentioned why Sam disappeared. Uh, because I think the the recording of us mentioning why Sam disappeared got lost to audio problem demons. So, I believe it. Yes, that yeah. was literally. I remember. Yeah, and we had to we re-record it half the episode. Yeah, yeah. I don't. <laughs> oh my god. I don't think it was half, but yeah, we recorded like thirty it forty was like minutes. An hour, dude. It was a lot, and uh, that was where we, Sam's fine. He just also uh, you know scheduling demons more or less, um, and the Air Force, you know asking him to do things, which I guess is important, I suppose. He also has a wife now. There's there's that. That's true. That's true. And five cats. That's a lot of cats. I can't believe Sam turned into, like, an old cat lady, but, like... A married old a cat lady? Barely 30 year <laughs> And he's barely 30 years old. Yeah, that too. That too. <laughs> it's true. He turned into... You know, actually, it's not that surprising if you knew his family, because I his mom did exactly the same thing. Anyway, I've heard this. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is not relevant at all. Uh, but yes. Yeah. So uh, all, all that to say, there is no bad blood. Uh, it's it genuinely it is an issue with scheduling. And, yeah. No, this is- <laughs> uh, you know, we're all grown ass adults that have very busy lives. Yeah. We're not just making things up to make it sound better. It is actually just scheduling. <laughs> so here are me and Isaiah. And then we're going to go from here. We're going to see what happens. We may uh, move things around, do things different. We don't know. We're living, we're, we're flying by the seat of our pants here, baby. Who knows? It's a free ball in it. Skin of a bee's dick, really, yeah. A bee's dick? Have you never, it, that's, it's, it's how uh, Ant refers to Magic Pixel. <laughs> oh, that's a new one. Okay. I don't even. You never heard him be like, damn, you got, he, you got by on a bee's dick of health. <laughs> no, but that's a, I like that one though. Do bees even have dicks, though? They have to, because they they, they they lay eggs, and it's definitely not asexually. But, That's what drone bees are for. But That's fish, the whole job. fish don't have dicks. I mean, like, no, they, they don't. No, but be, but the big fat drone bees, those are all males. 
That's literally their no, only no, job no. is to reproduce and then no, die. I know, horribly. but I know how dr I know how the drone beast things work, but I don't know if they have dicks or if they just like nut on a egg or like nut on the queen's face. Like, you know, I don't know how that works. You know what I'm saying? I don't know that specific part. I know a lot about bees, Ooh. but I don't know that specific drone. part. I know, because your dad was a beekeeper randomly. <laughs> I mean, hobbyist beekeeper, not like a bee beekeeper, but yeah, yeah. Like, I know how to identify a queen, yeah. And like, I've, I know how to like, you know, deal with the slats and use the smoke and all that, yeah. Uh, they do, apparently. Oh, ah. It reverses and comes out of its abdomen. That's horrifying. All right. I almost wish uh, I didn't ask. Okay, that's something. Oh, and then they're, they're removed and then he dies of, of, of blood loss. Okay. Well, nice. Now I just. Damn, wow. he died getting his dick ripped off. That's crazy. Wow, Ant-Man of the Wasp is going to end a lot differently than everyone thinks it will. Sir, he's an ant. He's not a bee. Yeah, but she's a bee. Doesn't matter. <laughs> she's a female bee. So it's okay. I, I feel I, like they do the ripping. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe. This is a weird topic. We should feel like we should not continue down this path. Abort. abort yeah. Okay, so what the hell are we talking about, actually? Um, actually, actually, actually. Uh, yeah, no. I uh, wow. Train of thought just went in eight different directions there. Um, I like that we had a complete chaos start, and Matt isn't even here. I yeah, <laughs> I know. It's yeah. This does know. not bode well. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, D and D put out a new video talking about the 2024 books which are on the way and by on i forgot to put the release dates in my notes please hold where i very quickly google the release dates because <laughs> i forgot i was gonna write them in the notes everyone you're hearing this one live i'm just admitting to my stupidity here uh oh my god release dates i because they're soon they're soon uh okay all right hold on thank you screen rant okay we got so the player's handbook this is the 2024 rules uh the player's handbook september 17th the dmg november 12th and then the monster manual is technically i believe coming out in february 2025 right is that the right is that what it was it was was it february it was something I believe like so that. yeah it was around about yes February 18th for the Monster Manual, 2025, February 18th. So the books are soon. Um, they are on the way. And uh, so, you know, the. The. Um, oh, I can't my brain trying to talk and read at the same time is hard. The, the UA, the playtesting for the 2024 books stopped completely question mark i don't know if we're actually going to get any more playtest stuff for the other books but the player's handbook we're definitely done this i know mm -hmm. uh i don't know if we're getting any sort of playtest stuff for the dmg or the monster manual but anyway player's handbook is done so they released a video talking about the new books that are on the way so we're just going to discuss we're being topical and newsly today um, and we're only talking about 5e today, which is crazy. I know. One of those rare occasions. Yeah. Before we get all into all that, please take a moment, say a little prayer, drink some water, hit follow or subscribe on whatever you're listening on. Okay, let's go. So. So, so, so. Uh, the, the video, by the way, if anyone wants to watch the video, I guess I'll probably link it in the description. Let me be clear. I'll link it in the description if I remember. Um, <laughs> so I'll harass him. If I don't remember, however, you could just look up on the D and D, uh, YouTube channel. It's literally just called like 2024 fireside chat, something like that. Um, fireside chat, 2024 revised players handbook. There we go. Uh, and it's it is a one a one jaw craw a Chrissy P and a, and a and a Toddy K. We don't get we don't got a good one for Todd Kendrick, but yeah. Um, Tavin Shet and uh, before we, I guess before we get into it, I'm just curious. 
for the temperature check here. Where are you at emotionally for these 2024 rules at this point for this this rules refresh? Before this, before this video, pretty low. I'm not going to lie. Like, okay, okay. It just, and it's not for the reasons a lot of people, I mean, maybe it is. I've talked about it before. Because at first I was really excited for the stuff that they were doing in the UA. And then we would get the version two of the UAs and all that stuff would be gone. And it would be something different that I liked significantly less. And I was just kind of like, what the fuck? Why? This thing was great. What are you doing? You know? Yeah, I mean, it definitely felt like a lot of moving the furniture around just for the sake of it, which I still kind of feel like we're doing a little bit. Not gonna yeah. lie. Yeah, I can still see that. Um, and then, I'm not even going to lie, it just like, if it wasn't the, the consistent walkbacks of stuff, like I said it previously, I was 110% in on the, you know, warrior expert uh, caster priest thing i was like all in on that i was all in on the you know uh uh the wiz like the i can't remember what they're called the the different spell types oh arcane primal and divine yep all in on that i uh, thought it was amazing i mean like i said the whole time i was in on that idea assuming they were going to utilize it and then they just kind of didn't <laughs> and then i was less about it because they didn't do anything with it that was my problem you know? Yeah, and then they walked it back, which was like... And then uh, they just... Yeah. Well, it feels like they walked it back because, I don't know, they, just, they they were like, we don't actually have a good idea, so fuck it. And they walked it back is what it feels like. Yeah. Um. And then they were doing some really cool stuff, like... We'll talk about it later, but, like, we have four subclasses for the fighter. And they're all... We have four subclasses for everybody. They do, yeah, my bad. But, like... You know, it's stuff that we have seen before. It's going to get updates, but it's nothing new, you know? Yeah. The brawler, which, spoiler, we already talked about it, isn't going to be in there, was new. Is new, yeah. It was like a brand new way of interacting with the game. An unarmed fighter that's not a monk. That is fucking awesome. And it's gone. Yeah. And I don't even think, we, there's no rules for it. It doesn't exist, like, publicly. So we'll never actually see what it could do. Well, the UA playtest document still exists. So, you know, somebody could potentially take that and refine that down and make it into something. But yeah, we're not going to see their version in the player's handbook. As far as we know, it could come to later down the road. True, it could. Fair enough. Um, but... When this video came out, going back to the original question of like my temperature check, um, I, I I pride myself on on finding silver linings, and this entire video was a massive silver lining for me. <laughs> I mean, sure, yeah, I could kind of see that. They they did. T I will say the tone of the video was very. Now this, uh, not to not to be the uh, the the, I don't know, not to put a downer on the whole thing, but. You know, Chrissy P and Jawcraw have become the face of D&D for a reason. They both are very good at the sales pitch and the making you feel excited and talking it up. You know what I mean? Like, they're good at that. They're good at, at being the hype guys, you know, which is, is, is feels weird to say because they're both quite calm gentlemen. But the way they talk about D&D makes you want to play it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, the video has this very chipper, upbeat, like, it's going great kind of tone to it. But also, that's kind of their job to do that. So how much is it them phoning it in and how much is it legit? You know, there's no real way to know. Hard to say. But, yeah, I, I do think there was some silver lining stuff in this video for sure. And it's good to see that. Let's put it this way. What we've heard over the years with 5e is that when 5e 2020, uh, Jesus Christ, 5e 2014 was being um, developed. What we've learned over the years from many people talking about the development of that game is that the mood in the room was quite dour. You know, everyone was like, well, 
we're going to do this thing and it's probably the last hurrah of D&D and then we're going to put D&D out to pasture and that'll be the end of it. Like that's that's we didn't know this at the time, but now 10 years later, that's kind of the vibe that we heard was going on behind closed doors. So it's good to see that it seems like that's not the case right now, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, could they be faking it really well? I I suppose, hypothetically, they could. But I feel like if the development was going poorly for the 2024 rules or they weren't confident in the 2024 rules, they just wouldn't put these kind of videos out. They would just say nothing. You know what I mean? I feel mm-hmm. like that would probably be, rather than trying to like pretend, I feel like they just wouldn't say anything. So the fact that we're hearing stuff and they seem positive I think is probably a good sign yeah no I totally agree I it like it's no secret that 4e was a bit of a commercial nightmare for wizards and 5e was like a well here's something here's something and Um, then it was a commercial explosion that nobody expected yeah 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 they went from it's so jover to we're so back yeah Uh, yeah (laughs) literally we're so back baby yeah. So there is a level of like hurrah that we're definitely getting from these videos. For sure. It seems to be I, I, my my temperature on the situation is like, yeah, I was starting to be pretty down on it with a lot of the playtest stuff because it feels like, oh, here's a cool idea. Ah, JK, we're taking that away. Oh, here's another cool idea. Nah, JK, we're taking that away. And it felt like they kept doing that over and over. And that was getting on my nerves. And then we got to this place where I was like, the the last couple of playtest documents we got felt like here's us moving the furniture around do you like the couch over here or the couch over here and i'm like bro i want a new couch they're like no no we're not honest no new couch we're just moving the couch i'm like didn't even read them what didn't even read them oh the like last couple of them yeah i mean i don't even remember exactly uh god what was it even Uh, let's see if i can open up D D beyond real quick it was like it, it was this air of like, yeah, like I was just like, I'm sitting here looking at Drawcron and I'll be like, can we get a new couch, please? And he's like, no, we're going to move the couch. I'm like, but I want a new one. He's like, no, no, we're just moving it. I'm like, OK, could could we get a different color couch? No, no, that's too much to ask for. And you're like, uh, OK. So like, you know, I mean, the, so the last two was the Bastions and Cantrips one. And the Bastions and Cantrips one was interesting, but we only ever saw that first draft of it. I mean, it's not the first draft, obviously, but we only ever saw that early draft of it. And it felt interesting, but underbaked. And then we got the Player's Handbook Playtest 8, which I don't remember everything that was in it, but I remember not being like, you know, jumping up and down or excited much about what was bumping around in there. You know, it was a lot of like, okay, that's fine, I guess. (laughs) Um. Mm. Although I do think is that the hold on is playtest eight the one where it was like barbarians can sneak with strength or stealth with strength? I think. <laughs> I think it was. The, I don't know. Yeah, they got an ability where it's like while you're raging, you can use instead of dex, you can use your strength or con or something to stealth or something like that. It was a really weird ability. Um. It was kind of a fun idea, but it was, a, yeah, it was a weird ability. It was, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'm, I was sort of like, uh, I don't know, man. And I'm still not, I wouldn't say I'm on the hype train necessarily, but you know, I'm, I'm interested, you know, it'll probably be fun. I mean, here's the thing. It's not going to get any worse. It's not like the game's going to be shittier. You know what I mean? Like, I'm already not a huge fan of 5e. So, like, from my perspective, I'm like, it can't, it can't get worse. So, I'll pay attention. I'll give it uh, a twirl. I mean, look, they could make multiclassing racist. What? <laughs> no half anything. Oh, oh, I sure. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get to multiclassing, actually. Um... So yeah, I, I can't wait to not be. I can't, I can't wait to not feel seen again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I am I am, you know, sort of a little bit more interesting than I was, but still feeling a little 
um, not hesitant. What's the word? A little uh, cautious, pensive, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so, all right, the the the, the video proper, just because I was just yeah, I was just curious where you're at uh, mentally. Um, I I oh, actually, one last thing I will say. I do maybe feel a little bit like this whole thing was decided by some higher ups in marketing or some shit. Like that's the reason any of this is happening because it. it I don't know this. This absolutely all of this. <laughs> the UA the UAs don't, but like all of the interviews, all this. Like, hey guys, we're totally still working on the game. Don't you worry. Yeah, this just reeks of oh, of I don't PR even mean meddling. I don't even mean that. I mean the fact that the twenty twenty four books are happening at all feels a little m- very like marketing driven, and you know, like we have to put something out for the ten year anniversary. I don't know if this would have happened if the design team was a hundred percent just get like could just do what they wanted. You know what I mean? Like, um, so I don't know, like, because the designer in me said, like, I've said it before, like. Codify and 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Not conglomerate, but like put it all down into writing and bring and put it all together, right? Have it in one place. And I think a new player's handbook does exactly that thing where it's like uh, yeah. all the stuff, all the revisions we've done over the last 10 years, it's all in one spot for you, the viewer. That seems like something they would do. I, I but I'm not gonna, it, it definitely. It, it, it couldn't have been a studio thing that was spurred on by PR, uh, you know, futzing. Probably. I, I could give you that. Yeah, I, I think what I, I guess really what I mean is I I think if it was entirely up to the designers, the form that this current like the form of this content wouldn't be revised rules. It would come at us in a different form like it would be a new big book that like clarifies a bunch of things, or it would be a new, it it might be a whole new edition. Like, I think it would come in a different form. The fact that they're doing this weird, it's still five E, but not five E in betweeny thingy is the thing that makes me go, okay, this was like a marketing move and the designers are working with what they got and they're trying to make something as good of out of it as they, as they can. You know what I mean? Mm. so you know like I could see a world where they for the 10 year anniversary they release some sort of like mega omnibus book that uh, adds a, adds or fixes a bunch of stuff in the game rather than re-releasing the existing core 3 or something like that you know what I mean mm. something along those lines uh, so <clears throat> the video opens up uh, and Old, old jaw, jaw crawl uh, says the team is in currently in print review. They're making final tweaks and looking under the hood. And he says everything is coming along splendidly. That's how they open the video. So, you know, positive right from the jump. Uh, they say they're doing print review and final tweaks and all that. I will say. So, as we just established, this new player's handbook is coming out September 17th, which is what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five months from now. Now, the video was released, I don't know, like a week ago or whatever ish as of recording. Um, did they necessarily record it within the time frame of it being released. No, they might have recorded it a little while ago, but either way, they probably recorded it fairly recent. Um, so the fact that they're in print review and still tweaking things, man, it feels like they're really coming down to the wire on this. <laughs> it does, yeah. Like, the t- like I'm wondering, they're close. They're almost there. They're, you know, uh, there's, um, there's so much. Well, sh- I don't know. Well, here's the thing. If, if, if this was recorded two months ago, not so much, but... Yeah, I don't think it was recorded that long ago is the thing, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think this was recorded in January, you know? So, like, because mm-hmm. five months, I mean, the thing is, is the fact that they're still, in, in Jeremy Crawford's words, making final tweaks 
means things are being changed and adjusted and you know the the turnaround time to here's the final draft to having books being printed and on shelves there's a lot of crap that has to go on in between that right so yeah it's just it yeah it feels like they're cutting it crazy close here and i feel like they're maybe having to rush a little to hit that 2024 release date i mean the fact that the monster manual is coming out in 2025 is probably a decent indicator of that you know Mm. um also man let me just say the time the fact that there's the time period between the player's handbook and the new monster manual oh that's gonna be so awkward hate that i hate that that's a thing yeah it's just gonna be like so it's like yeah here's all these cool new powers for the players and uh gm uh good luck bud and you're like oh awesome great as if the well, G- yeah, they, look they're looking at you and being like well you've been in this position before <laughs> yeah yeah you've been in this position before which is to say the entire time you've been playing 5e you've been in this position anyway so what's the difference at which point i go you right you right <laughs> So, you know, you're right. But fuck you anyway. Yeah, fuck you anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, they make an they make a comment about these particular books, which I think is quite interesting in that they said the art and the text or sorry. Uh, yeah, the, the art is giving context to the text more than ever or more than any other D&D book ever has with these and and based on the way Jeremy and, and Chris Perkins were talking about it, they were saying that they were basically, they had the piece of art and then were designing ideas based on the piece of art they had to like right next to them. You know, like this spell does this. And then they look at the art and go, Oh, this is in the, in the picture for the art. So I'm going to add this to the spell. That I think is really cool and I think is going to get us some really um, interesting evocative ideas because art and writing, there's this thing you can do where the two can influence each other. You know, like it could go both ways, right? A writer could write something really interesting and then an artist can pull an art piece out of that. But you can also have a situation where an artist draws something with absolutely zero context and then the writer can add all this fun context to it, like just by looking at the piece of art. So it sounds like they're kind of doing that where it's like they're getting pieces of art and then pulling stuff out of it. And that's a unique thing that I don't. As far as I can tell by what they're saying, they've never done that before. And maybe D&D has never done that ever question mark unsure but that's what they made it sound like uh i think that's really cool i think that'll get us some fun stuff i'm hoping maybe i'm being too wishful but i'm hoping you know what i mean no no, i mean i think you hit it in it it could be amazing right like it could yield some amazing results it might not but if things pan out the way they should yeah it's gonna be great and i i've said this before i've said this a lot um just in general one of the things that irks the shit out of me about TTRPGs and D and D especially is that there are so many really cool ideas that you want to see visualized, but then they don't. Actually, you know where this is the worst? Unironically, it's the Warhammer shit. It, everything to do with Warhammer 40k. Yeah. Amazing ideas with no visual representation for it, and you're like, what? Yeah. What the fuck is going on right now? Yeah. Like, I, I, I mean, <laughs> you, you know do, what I mean? You do have to take the L a little bit and understand that a lot of it is budget you know like no absolutely no i get it i do but so there's th- that's the thing i'm kind of trying to say right is like now that i mean no, now yeah, that we have that fucking, budget for, more, for for james workshop yeah no well uh, yeah they're too busy suing literally everybody and everything right um over stuff that they stole <laughs> <laughs> but yeah with, with uh with wizards it's it's great to finally see definitively what the hell Sacred flame looks like. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna get that one. Finally, but that'd be fun. I, I finally we finally get to see what chill touch looks like. Yeah, I mean they. So yeah, they literally said in the video, um, we're getting more spell illustrations depicting the magic in the game, which I definitely, as as I just said, is a thing I think a lot of people like. Uh, and they specifically call out some of the spells and. I, 
this I like a lot. Some of the art, some of the spell art, is the spell being cast by the spell's creator. So they specifically reference Melk, Tasha, and Bigby. Uh, so Melk's my new meteors. Tasha has like fucking six spells named after her at this point. Uh, Bigby's hand. Morning, Kanan. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they called out Morning Kanan having art, but they they mentioned that those three I remember specifically. Um, and oh, like, and, um, um, oh god, uh, oh Melf also with the acid arrow. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I just said. I said Melk. Oh Melf, sorry Melk. I meant to say yeah Melf. Yeah. Uh, yes, they specifically say there's a piece of art of Melf casting uh, Melf's acid arrow, which I think is very funny. Um, side note: Do you know? Do you know? who Melf the character is. Yeah, that's uh, Gary's son. It was Gary's son, and he was an elf wizard, and his name is Melf because he's a male elf. <sighs> that's, yeah, nice. But yes, that was Gary's nice. son's character. Um, well, it's so good yeah. to know that the that the stupid names thing has gone back since, since the, the dawn of D&D. Yeah, literally, yes. Yeah, as long as there's d and I mean, there's been uh, Meryl the Mitcher. <laughs> and, and, and uh, Matingo Santoya. <laughs> yeah. Uh I mean, my guy, fucking the mo- one of the most famous D&D villains ever is Vecna and his name is just an anagram of Vance because of, you know, Vancean casting. So, yeah. I didn't I didn't fucking know that. You didn't know that where Vecna's name came from? No. I hate that so yeah, much. That's why he's named Vecna. God they took the name. It. They took Vecna is such a cool name. It, it did work out. It worked <laughs> out. Yeah, Vecna worked out as a good name. But yeah, literally they took Vance. Uh, I, I can't remember Vance's first name, but the author who did who created Vance and magic and they moved it. They moved the letters around and got Vecna. Literally. Yep. So, yes, uh, I just. D- just, I hate I hate it. I hate that so much. <laughs> D&D has a long history of of uh, goofy ass move the letters around and get a new name. Um <laughs> I can't I remember God, what's his first name? Is it Jack Vance? That sounds right, right? Jack Vance? It's Jack Vance. I was right. Okay. Anyway, um so yeah, Mel, Mel, we're getting specific art of things like Mel's acid arrow, which I think is very fun. Uh, I hope we also get Mel's minute meteors because the, there's also a goofy story behind that spell because Gary's son wanted to cast fireball but didn't want to blow up all his teammates, so he, he made him Mel's minute meteors so he could throw little fireballs. I I think we've talked about this, but in my head, uh, Mel's Minute Meteors is just a uh, crystal mass or soul mass from Dark Souls, where you just do the, the hand wavy over the head and the little thing is just yeah. hover above you and then sentry gun at shit. I imagine it like that, except they're like little flaming rocks as opposed to like yeah, magical yeah. orbs. Um, Yeah, so and this is where we get the comment of Jocker. So I literally wrote the quote down. This is really the first of the uh, this is really the first of the player's handbooks that have been done that has been done where the art has been developed so closely with the text. Uh, the art usually comes uh, quote unquote there. Um, and then I said, yeah, the, the art usually comes later, but not this time. The two were being done in tandem. Uh, so he calls it out very specifically, which the fact that he's calling it out to me makes me think, OK, he must think that they're doing something really cool with that. Otherwise, he wouldn't mention it, you know? Yeah, that's a huge thing to just if you're if, drop. Yeah, like if you're that. saying yeah. it, it must be relevant. You must feel like it's co- it's a cool idea because you're bringing it up. Because if you were doing something like that, but it wasn't that interesting, you just wouldn't mention it. Uh, so, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, they then go on and they mention all three of these books. All three of them are bigger than. Than their 2014 in- incarnations, uh, by a wide margin. By a wide margin, uh, Todd Kendrick specifically mentions seeing a picture of the new 2024 player's handbook, and he comments on how much thicker it is than the other books. At like twice, I think he says like it's like twice as big or something like that. Now it's unclear. He said more than twice. Something along those lines. Uh, it's unclear whether he meant how much bigger the player's handbook is relative to the other 2024 books. Like, I'm not sure if he was saying 
the 2024 player's handbook is a lot bigger than the 2024 DMG and 2024 monster manual, or if he's saying it's a lot bigger than the 2014 books, not 100% clear. But either way, he comments on the player's handbook being fucking massive. Um, now, granted, we do need to keep in mind that's not all just words because this book has a is going to have a ton of full page art spreads. A ton. Every class and every race we know for a fact species are getting a full page of art. So that's adding a lot of page count. So do keep that in mind. But, you know, still still interesting that he commented on how much bigger the book is. Um, it is also worth pointing out that the they're making the font bigger for these books. They're going up in font size a little bit because people complained about that with the 2014 books. So now they have a chance to fix that. Nice. Um, so, yeah. They uh, they do mention after talking about the size of the books relative to the old books, they still make the comment that this game uh, or that the 2024 rules are compatible with previous adventures. They're still being specific that it will be backwards compatible with adventures. So they're not trying to say it's like 100 percent. Everything will work back and forth. Honestly, I I feel like, and I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like people, when they heard the backwards compatible comment uh, all the way back when one D&D was announced, I feel like people misinterpreted that statement and extrapolated a little too much and thought that, like, the new books and the old books were going to have this, like, perfect simpatico existence where they just flawlessly flow between each other. I never had that idea. I always looked at it as... No, no, I... I, For, I, for me, I always looked... I, I always assumed the new books are going to be replacers for the base three, but they're going to work with all the supplement stuff. And that's basically yeah, what yeah, they're and saying. And I, I think... Yeah, and I think the, the... If you expected the supplements to be perfectly, seamlessly backwards compatible... That's not reasonable. I don't even, I don't even know where to start well, about that. Also, if they were, you, if you, if you, here's the thing. Well, wait, the, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, just, let me just rant real quick. Okay. <laughs> if you change something, right? Anything fundamental with the game, right? Anything. Automatically, you have made it impossible for a one-to-one -one seamless fit. You can do as much changing as you want. But, uh, uh, Josh, you do fucking 3D art just like I do. Even if you change a vertex 0.00001%, it will, fundamentally speaking, no longer fit perfectly. Obviously, there it, it is was gonna require at least a little bit of, of reverse uh, of you know backwards engineering tweaking to make it fit. I mean, yeah, of course it would because it couldn't not. You know, that's, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much what I was gonna say. I was basically. What I was going to say is, on top of what you just said, it's like, even even if they could make them perfectly, like, sim like, seamlessly flow between each other and backwards compatible, you wouldn't actually want that because then that would mean there's kind of no point in having the new books. They don't really do anything, right? Like, if they perfectly work with each other, then why do you need the new books, right? Like, it doesn't make any sense. They need to, like shake things up in some fashion otherwise mm -hmm. why what's the point uh so uh on a simple answer there is not yeah pretty much um so yes they're still specifically saying it will be it will work with all of your previous adventures uh which you know so we're, we're you know basically they're like listen guys are these going to make I I think what they're doing is they're saying they're they're being very clever about their verbiage so they don't piss off marketing, right? They're what they're saying is these new books are kind of going to make the 2014 books irrelevant. But we're not allowed to say that. So we're not going to say that directly. But we're going to say it by not saying it. 
you know? <laughs> I think that's kind of what they're doing there, which is it's fine. I get it. They got to deal with, you know, higher up bullshit and marketing teams. And, you know, marketing's basically the devil. So, you know, yeah. you got to deal with them. Um, and then... This I thought was a really this I thought was a really interesting comment that that the old Jawcraw made here, which is why I have it in quotes. So quote: Every page of the book is different from you know the equivalent of the 2014 Player's Handbook, and that's true of all three of the revised core books. Unquote. Every page is different. Is the claim he made. I don't know if he's just being hyperbolic and like hyping us up or if that's like true, but that's quite the statement. Yeah, if that is, that's an insane statement to make. Like the logistics for that are crazy. It's a pretty possible, but crazy. It's a pretty bold claim. Now, could could he now he could mean like every page is different in that we've given every page a look through and like, you know, some pages have slightly better grammar, right? That could count as different. Right. You know what I mean? So Mm. he doesn't specify the degree to which all of the pages are different. He just said, but he says every page of the book is different from the 2024 version. So that's kind of exciting. You know, the fact that every page like they're basically they're going through it with a fine tooth comb and looking at fucking every page, every word, as it were. That's pretty that's pretty exciting. Uh, I don't, you know, you probably don't want to get, uh, temper your, temper your hype a little bit and don't, uh, like, uh, I don't know. What's the word? Don't assume anything too crazy, but that is an exciting statement on the face of it. Um, and then, and arguably I'm, this is going to make me sound like such a fucking nerd, but here we are. Uh, I arguably think this is the more exciting statement uh, because Chris Perkins follows up with there's a lot of UX improvements that have been baked into these books. There's been some reorganization of the books. I arguably think that's more exciting because I think the the UX, listen, (laughs) UX or UI, whichever phrase you want to use, which is to say user interface is really important for every game on the planet and i'm someone who gets really annoyed when games have particularly clunky ui um and i will rant and rave about it that is also true of tabletop games i think tabletop books it's really important they have good ux now obviously ui design in terms of a rule book is different from something like a video game or a piece of software, but I think it's still something that is really important and should, you know, it should be looked at thoroughly. Uh, so I'm pretty excited that they're essentially reorganizing the books, hopefully to make them just more pleasant to look through, you know? No. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, we've both read a couple uh, more than our, our fair share of, of like rule books. And I mean, you, is could, worse you could say it, da- like Daggerheart makes no sense. It's organized like crap. Yeah, no. OK, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> Daggerheart's I, I was rough. trying to be nice. No, <laughs> no. it's <laughs> Daggerheart's it's rough. organized it's... like to, to be frank. It's organized like dog shit. Yeah, it's bad. like <laughs> especially one point two. I yeah, they're working it, on it. Don't even know where to start. Like they're, they're working on, it. they're working on it. But it, yeah, it, they're working on it. it it's it's going to be better. Don't go. I, I have, I have absolute faith that it's, it's the end product is going to look a lot nicer. Yeah. But good lord, <laughs> the amount of times I had to read something and be like, wait, did I just mit? What the fuck? And then go back and be like, or, no, I did definitely didn't. What is this? <laughs> yeah. Or find rules that were separate, like a one rule that feels like it should be together, but they're separated in two different places. And you're like, why are these separated? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, a book is, is organized fantastically. What? Lancer. Yeah. Lancer's not bad. Honestly, I, that's his organization fucks. They, they put all the GM shit before the end. Thank. Like, I'm actually quite happy with that. They were <laughs> like, okay, here's the base playing stuff. 
the player side stuff, the GM stuff, and now here's hundred, uh, literally a hundred pages of lore. Because they, I, I bet you they knew. I, I guarantee you they knew that if you had to get through a hundred pages of lore and then get to the GM no, shit. No, no, never. If you no. were going to read it straight through, you'd just be like, no, I, no, 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 terrible idea. I, I just don't, I don't want to. It's fun. It's funny you say that actually, because back in the day, like in the like nineties, it was really common for role playing games to open with their hundred pages of dense ass lore. That was the standard, um, and I think it was mostly the standard because of White Wolf games. Uh, so I get that, and I'm gonna be real. James Workshop, they're the codexes for the armies. Are they like that? I would yeah. say about 60% of a code, a $50 codex is lore. Well, yeah, I mean, the I, thing that has like your, your army rules and in, 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 like, think about how much of, of a codex is tables. Sure. Yeah. Here's my question. And then 60% on uh, top of that is lore. Here's my question though. Is the lore first? It's interspersed. Oh God. Okay. Nowadays, it probably was a lot denser early on. I have somewhere I have a 7th edition Ultramarines Codex. I don't know where the fuck I put it, but I have it somewhere. Okay. Um, so yeah, that that's definitely a thing, and I... I'm <laughs> happy that the D&D team is looking at it, because uh, you know what? At the end of the day, the thing you really gotta keep in mind, because you know, tabletop rule books are rule books, right? So you you can read them from cover to cover like a book, but really what they are isn't a book like a novel. They're they're a they're a um, they're reference a books. They're like textbooks. They're a textbook. Yeah, they're a textbook. You need to be able to easily go back to something you've already read and find the page with the information you're looking for, and that ability to find the page is super important and i mean 5e is pretty good at that i would say for the most part there's bits and bobs you know what actually you know what you know which book in 5e and of course i'd say uh, uh, you probably already know what i'm gonna say the book with the worst like ui layout issues in the 5e pantheon of books undoubtedly the dmg yeah the dmg (laughs) The layout of the 2014 DMG is atrocious, and honestly, if they change nothing else for the 2024 DMG, just a better layout will make me happy. You know what I really want to see out of the new player's handbook? What? I brought this up forever ago. Uh Uh, I, for the spell list, because we're going to have much more spells than we did in 2014. We have to, right? Okay. I need the spells broken up. Oh. And I don't care how they do it. I know what you're gonna say. But I need it. I don't want alphabetical. I want school, then level. For each one. I want a different section. Give me give me give me like a little uh uh fluff piece on each school of magic. Give me all of the spells that are in that school from levels one to nine. That way I don't have to look at the entire spell list and go fuck. Yeah, but I need to look up these two spells and they're on opposite sides of the spell X section. Yeah. Why? Yeah. I can go, oh, well, I'm a divination wizard. The only thing I give a shit about is the, the divination, divination section. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's what I, I, I eat, bro. It <laughs> fucks me up so bad in Hellscapes. Hellscapes organization of its gambits is it's it's alphabetical. It's true. Yeah, it's but bad because Hellscapes has an ass load of grammatical errors because it never got out of beta. <laughs> yeah. There's things where it's like it'll be like killing intent and then you look at it in the thing and I'm like, I'm like well, there's no killing intent. There's killers intent, but that could be a completely different thing. <laughs> I'm going to Why? assume it's the same one. Yeah. And then you look and there is there's not it, it, it was removed and they never removed any references to it. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, all right, I'm That's looking for the thing ab- in hellscapes. I'm looking for the ability called killing intent. OK, well, I found a b- ability called murderer's motive that that might be the same one. <laughs> they literally talk about in hellscapes. One of the weapon mods you get, there's two mods in particular. One is called uh, 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 poisoned. Uh-huh. Uh, 
and it does not, uh, in fact, poison you. It inflicts a disease on you, and the mod says, you can see the diseases in Chapter 1 of Hellscapes. Not D&D, Hellscapes. There are no diseases in Chapter 1. <laughs> I checked. They don't exist. Uh, there's another one where it's it, you have a, a, an armor mod that gives you a, a tag called Comfortable. There is no Comfortable tag in that game. It does not exist. Okay. I checked the index for that one. It's not there. So, yeah, spells, I, I just need better organization on that. Um, Understandable. I and I'm I want I need I need prices for equipment. I need prices for equipment. Uh, and yes, I do want prices for a ten foot pole or fucking pythons. I need to know how much that shit costs. It is mission critical for me as a player. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I need to know how many pythons I can shove in a ceramic jar with gunpowder and fucking gasoline. So I can make as many bombs as possible. Because look, I love you, DM, but I don't want to go into the goblin cave. I just want to drop a bunch of grenades in there and let the problem sort itself out. I don't care that there's hostages. This is a very specific uh, Isaiah request, but sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um... So, uh, yeah, and then they, they talk a little bit about how information has been moved around, but there's also brand new spells, brand new uh, feats, brand new class features, brand new subsystems, brand new subclasses. Uh, so not only are things getting moved, but there is, of course, plenty of new crap, which we kind of knew, but it's good to hear them, you know, reiterate. Uh and then Jawcraw also mentions there's some new rules, like new rules guidance sections, which sound interesting to me, uh, such as he specifically calls out guidance on illusions that wasn't there before, uh, which I assume is like how to deal with illusions in your game, uh, which is a good one yeah. because, you know, that boy, does that shit come up a lot. Kind of crazy that didn't Correct. exist before. TBH. Yeah, I don't like. Yeah, I don't know. Because man, there's the illusions. Uh, here's the thing. That's one of those things that how, how you, you expected to have patched before a new rule yes, ten years later, yes, right? Yeah. Considering that there's an entire there's a subclass, an entire wizard subclass there's a whole, for it. Whole wizard about it. Dozens of spells. I'm checking how many spells are in the illusion. Quite a bit. I'm quite a bit. Um, gotta fact check this. You also mentions that there are some rules that previously were in the DMG that are getting shifted over to the player's handbook. So one he calls out is Hallelujah. things like breaking objects. Uh, like he talks about if you're trying to break a mirror, uh, the rules for breaking a mirror will now be in the player's handbook. I'm going to be honest, though. Now, he only gave that one example. So, you know, I'm extrapolating a little bit here, but Rules like breaking an object. Do I need the rules for that as a player in the player's handbook? Because I feel like, you know, if you're like, hey, GM, I would like to break this mirror. And then the GM goes, OK, do this. Like, why does that need to be in the player's handbook? I'm just going to ask the GM what they want me to do with it anyway. You know? Uh, so for me as a player, mission critical. For most people, no, I get it. Not probably not. Um, like why? I like that it's there because they like. For example, if you have something, uh, like if there's a spell that lets you summon golems, right? And like rock golems have the 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 siege feature. That's where I could see it be necessary. Where it's like, well, this does double damage to structures. And then you go, well, what what quantifies a structure? Are structures considered items, or are they their own thing? How does that? How does breaking them work? How do I know like? How would it hit them? Stuff like that. I That's guess. That's where I could see it being necessary. But again, is it critical? No. Do I personally like it's there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the reason I feel like it's not critical is because you're just going to say to the GM, I want to, you know, I want to break the mirror or whatever. And the GM's just going to adjudicate the ruling for you on the spot anyway. So even if you do have rules for it in the player's handbook, 
the GM might still say to you, yeah, but I want you to do this instead. You know what I mean? Like, so it feels like having that in the player's handbook is maybe a little bit of a waste of space. I mean, it depends. We'll see. He didn't specify on, you know, what those what those sections are going to look like. So maybe yeah, if, if the breaking thing is is a paragraph and a page, not so bad. If it's six pages of how to break shit and uh, probably not. Great. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, we don't know exactly what form it's going to take, but I don't know. I feel like keeping some of that stuff in the GM DM would have been fine. But, you know, whatever. They're moving some stuff to the player's handbook. We'll see. We'll see. Of course, then there, it's also going to be the conversation of, oh, they decided to re- move these rules from the DMG, but why didn't they move this rule from the DMG into the player's handbook? And then people are going to argue about that, but people are going to argue anyway, so who cares? Yeah, so people are, they're going to argue over literally anything they can. Yeah, anything and everything. Um, Bro, people are arguing over Slayer's release in Guilty Gear because there's not enough crosses on him when he statistically and categorically has more crosses than he has ever had on him. And people are still arguing. Yes, they're going to argue over absolutely nothing. I didn't hear about this one, but OK. Um, oh, you ha- I'll send you links. Yeah, it's I was going to say, you'll have to show me that that, that nonsense later. Um, and then so they talk oh, about speaking of numbers really quick. Sorry, uh-huh. there's 34 illusion spells with no actual understanding of how illusions work in the game. Nice. Yeah, that make kinda, it make sense. That's kind of crazy, actually, at 34. Um, they then go now I'm on to check how many crosses Slayer has to, to, <laughs> again, then go on to talk about um, how, you know, obviously, of course, design continued after the Unearthed Arcana stopped releasing because, of course, they did. It would be ridiculous for them not to. Um, so, uh, and they mentioned how, uh, even subclasses that were in books like Tasha's got looked at, even though those weren't in the UA. And this is where they mention the brawler subclass. Uh, and they specifically say brawler didn't make the cut for fighter. Now I'm very sad about this. I think Isaiah is also very sad about this. <laughs> Heartbroken, really? Yeah, I really love the idea of Brawler. I I understand. I, I, I don't know if it got cut because maybe people on surveys said it was stupid because it like, you know, it steps on the monk's toes or something. I don't know. I feel like the thing about monk is like monk is a martial artist, but the archetype of guy who punch hard and fight dirty wasn't really covered in the game. You know, like you could reflavor a monk, obviously, but it doesn't feel the same as I'm playing a fight. Cause the thing is the fighter has stuff like action surge and second wind, which feels like the thing where the boxer, you know, beats the shit out of the dude and then like takes a half step back and like sh- shuffles a little and then axe and surges and goes for another volley of blows or whatever, or he gets his ass beat and he like wipes the blood off his chin and that's second wind, right? That feels very fightery. That's not really monkey, you know? So- I agree completely. By the way, the answer is Slayer has, um, if you count the, 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 ins- the outside outline of the cross on his chest, he has four total and Strive, he has 10. Oh my Lord. Over twice the amount of crosses. That's a lot of crosses. Oh. <laughs> God, he's so hot. I just <laughs> I gotta get back on top. Can't keep staring yeah, at Slayer. Stop looking at Slayer. It's not important right now. Um He uh so yeah, I yeah, I feel like the brawler was filling a niche that wasn't really filled, and we're not getting it, and I am sad about this. Um Yeah, well so like going back to what you said, right? It was filling a niche that wasn't being filled, and it it does that thing that I've I've spoken about before where it it reinvents an idea in a way that I think works, right? You have Eldritch Knight, you know, you have your your original sort of gish style sword and uh, sword and spell. And then you have Blade Singer. Blade Singer, yeah. And I don't think anyone is going to make the argument that Blade Singer steps on Eldritch Knight's toes or vice because versa. it's a completely different vibe of Spell Slinger. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mostly agree with that. In the same way, you can have a, a barbarians and paladins. You have a heavy physical fighter that's really good with defense and smacks really hard. No one is going to tell you that you don't need one over the other. 
They both have a perfectly valuable niche. Well, some it's people, the same thing with Brawler Fighter. Some people might, but yeah, but they're wrong and fuck I, them. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, fair. Um, if, if you do, you're wrong. Fuck you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. You're wrong. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm. What I'm hoping. This is what I'm hoping. They didn't say this in the video. This is me going on wild speculation. But I'm really hoping that the reason Brawler didn't make it is because they felt like there's a better version of brawler that they could design and they just didn't have enough time to do that so they're gonna put it in another thing down the road that's what i'm hoping because you know it, we only got one draft of it and a as we stated in the beginning they're running up to the deadline pretty tight so i'm hoping that they looked at it and said okay we don't have enough time to redesign the brawler and we want to pri prioritize other things so we're going to cut it for now and do something better later so it will be a better more fun subclass that's what i'm hoping um yeah i get i that that would be good i would appreciate that greatly this is where though this is the thing where i had I, I got a little perplexed so they said the brawler didn't make it instead of brawler because every class is getting four subclasses in the player's hand and I kind of don't love that everyone's getting exactly the same amount of subclasses. I don't like the over homogenizing, but wait, 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 wait but what are they going to do? Well, no, I, I guess no cleric had more than three at the start, cleric right? Had like eight. Yeah, I was about to say, cleric so had a what ton. a bruh. So bruh, I they, just realized that that's ah, going to be annoying. So they didn't specify what they're doing with cleric, but if I remember what they said with wizard, is the idea is that the four subclasses are going to be opposites to each other. So it's like they're going to do evocation and abjuration. Didn't know. I th yeah. Abjuration as opposites. And then I think it was. Oh, God, what they said, what the four wizard subclasses, I think it was illusions and some illusions and divination, I think, were the other opposites that they said the only thing i know for a fact is that none of them are conjuration and i immediately yes. don't give a fuck anymore no, about wizard. there's <laughs> no conjuration and no uh divination or no no sorry no necromancy um yeah i they hashtag Al uh, alucard abridged and like that you've lost me. <laughs> yeah uh, you'd have to go and look uh, they said it in one of the older videos where they were talking to todd kendrick a while ago what the four wizard subclasses are but yes base they're they're doing four for everybody so what that means is for for most of the classes that means they're getting more for what for wizard and cleric it means they're getting less but everyone else is getting more right i think everyone else had three to my memory so, yeah. yes. So everyone had three except no. Um, someone had two. We had two. I was it sorcerer. Sorcerer did have two. You're right. It had draconic and wild magic. Yeah. Just another L sorcerer took. Yo, high five for me remembering that. Yeah. This sorcerer. Don't worry, I did it myself. Sorcerer <laughs> L's across the board. Um, so. Yeah, uh, the thing that they mentioned, so with Fighter, we're getting Champion, Eldritch Knight, Battlemaster, right? There's the three. So if we're not getting Brawler, who's the fourth? And they said, well, we decided to go with Psy Warrior from Tasha's. And the reason they said yep. was they wanted to give, quote unquote, more psionic. This is Jeremy saying this more psionic friends to the aberrant mind sorcerer and the goo warlock. Um. All right, so two things here. One, I find it weird that we're saying great old one warlock is psionic, but okay. Well, so I mean, it okay, kind of is. Mind is literally Cthulhu, so it has to be great old one Cthulhu. Like, yeah, it kind of is. It just never felt like that to me, but I get what he means. Um, but more importantly, here they're taking Psy Warrior, so we're taking from Tasha's and reprinting a Tasha subclass. So we're not reprinting any Xanathars. No. Nope. Not yet. At that least. feels really weird to me because Xanathars is older. Tasha's is newer. Shouldn't the older thing get 
the rework, not the newer thing. You know, I would love to have seen a reworked Arcane Archer, for example. <laughs> right? I mean, I so I, I agree. I, I think uh, Arcane Archer is fantastic on paper. I'm not a huge fan of it. In the execution. execution was bad. Um, yeah. I you know what my my crackpot theory is my conspiracy theory. They're going to re-release it's, it's, Anasars. Was, no, well, that yes, but it's because uh, Psy Warrior is so new that it would require minimal revisions. True, true. Well, yeah, so that's the thing, right? I, yeah, they're taking from Tasha's because Tasha's is so recent that Tasha's is mostly in line with the 20 toward, 2024 design philosophy already because it's, yeah. you know, it came out not that long ago. I mean, Tasha's is what, like two years old, three years old, something like that. Um, something like that. I think it came out 2020. Okay, so 2021. Um, and this is then reinforced because they also mentioned that the fourth subclass for the rogue is going to be soul knife. Which is also from Tasha's. And, you know, um, I'm a little sad. What about my boy Mastermind? I'm just saying. Yeah. No respect to the Mastermind. Yeah. We need more explicitly non magic subclasses. I'm just saying. I'm just, you know. Completely agree. So, a little, little, I mean, Soul Knife is cool. Like, I like Soul Knife. It's fun, but. I don't know. I would have liked a different one. Uh, but yeah, so it seems like they're pulling quite a bit from Tasha's, uh, at least with you know, those two. Well, oh, an aberrant mind sorcerer is all from also from Tasha's. Yeah. Wait, real quick. Am I alone in this? The the awful art for Soul Knife yeah, kind of put me off of Soul Knife. You are not alone. And yes, I hate that picture. It's, it's not. It's it's a rough. It's a rough piece of art that that little taffling with this little pink dinky stabberino is just not not doing it for me just looks yeah, no. awkward was not to be fair we, we was not we was not cock dick balling on that one but. no uh, to be fair is there any good halfling art in 5e you know no no right like all, the halflings all look weird I'm literally gonna look this up right now the gnomes have a couple of good pieces halflings not so much um so yeah that's kind of where we're at with subclasses uh i really hope they keep dancer bard the punchy bard god please don't get rid of that that one was so fun please yeah no i yeah give give me my 14 dancer please meanwhile it looks like we're probably still gonna get world tree barbarian which is whatever is shit to me I don't even know what that is. The World Tree Barbarian. It. It's just like a Yggdrasil based barbarian where your whole vibe is you tapping into the World Tree. It's like, what does it do? I don't know. It can teleport and it can like summon the vines of the tree to like grab people and stuff. It just wasn't. It was okay. It just wasn't amazing, you know? It also didn't feel super it's barbarian. Like they should have kept Giant Barbarian. Probably. Uh, it didn't feel very barbarian esque either. Um,. Then uh, Jawcraw moves on, and I, uh, this is this is a bit of a long quote, but I think this this one's worth reading verbatim. So Jawcraw says, "Quote: We've been identifying more unexpected multi-class combinations. In some cases, making changes to prevent undesirable combinations, but then in other cases, protecting the combinations because there are a number of multi-class combinations that are tons of fun, and we want to make sure they stay protected in the game." This was a surprise to me because I just didn't think they were going to look at multiclassing at all. I thought they would just ignore it because it's, you know, technically an optional rule and it's such a headache to try and deal with multiclassing. I just assumed they wouldn't look at it. So I'm pretty happy that they are. <laughs> That's cool. I am too. Look, I mean, Matt's happy. Multiclassing is awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's like feats, right? It's become such a core idea of the game of making your cool combination yeah, special. Yeah, it feels boy. weird to ignore it. Yeah, so uh, I agree. That being said, um, there are some that I don't know if you can detach fun from overpowered. 
Uh, uh, yeah, who knows? I mean, maybe there's no way to make Coffee Lock not fuck busted unless well, they specifically change the way the pack magic works. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say there is, hypothetically, if you found if there's a combination that's really, really good, but you wanted to depower it, you would you could kind of work backwards and look at the combo, look at the multi-class combo and then nerf the base or adjust one of the bases to, to like de you know to to depower the multi class like it, it, it's doable it's just it it's not easy it's hard for sure it's a difficult task which is kind of again kind of why I thought they weren't going to even look at it because it's a it's a bit of a tall order but they yeah. are all my DMs that got to deal with paladin rogues right exactly yeah I mean perfect example right like you could potentially. You know, maybe you put some kind of new... Now, I'm not saying they're going to do this, but, like, you could hypothetically put some new rule in there where, oh, sneak attack and smite no longer stack. Like, maybe, you know, you have some rule where it's like, if smite is active, smite is the only version of a damage bonus on your attack that you can have or something like that. You know, something along those lines. You know, there's ways you could go about it. Um... Uh, yeah, and then he, he sort of follows up that uh, by saying uh, they're making sure to look at what the hell did I write? Did I make sure to look at if the combos are fun, but they're also looking at things that slow down play are overcomplicated or overpowered. So they're considering multiple facets. To me, do you know what that says? What? summoning stuff uh, any uh, any uh, uh, follower helper buddy thing yeah. that's i expect that and i will be a little frustrated if it isn't heavily revamped because i love summoning i do well you know i it's my favorite kind of caster but i i do recognize when gms are like it takes a while and it can get very frustrating i mean they're they already have been looking at that a bunch right the conjuration spells the tasha summon spells they've already been looking at that a ton so you're probably right that's probably a big like consideration so yeah you're probably fine there hopefully they don't just make it hopefully Hopefully they don't nerf it into the ground so much where summoning just feels pointless because then you're going too far the other way. Honestly, I so for summoning specifically, the way it works magically, I don't even think is that overpowered because you can typically only have one or a small number of summons out at a time because it's concentration. It's really the the expediency in which you can complete a round with it. True, true. Well, the the overpoweredness comes from stuff like I summon eight eight snakes from the sky or whatever, or sixteen snakes or whatever it is. You know, it's those kind of things. But they yeah. they're getting rid of those anyway. So are they? Yeah, because they said they're changing all of the conjuration spells to be different and not work the way they used to. And those that kind of nonsense of I summon sixteen snakes was the conjure spells, like conjure animals. I see. Oh. Uh, and then and then Chrissy P, Mr. Perkins, said something that that got my got my hackles up in a in a in a good way. It's hackles up is usually bad. I was intrigued by this statement. He said, "Quote: One of the great things about this book is that it opens the door to many more character concepts." That's exciting. That's a fun. I hope that's true. I hope he's not just blowing smoke up our ass on that one. You know, I can finally play Naruto in 5e. I'm so excited. I maybe not Naruto, uh, but <laughs> Damn. Uh, and then, yeah, Jawcraw follows up that statement and talks about how combining the new features, the new background system, the new subclasses, the adjusted multi-classing, you can do a lot more mixing and matching to create new character concepts that you couldn't really do before. So that sounds super sick to me. If it works again, if they're not blowing smoke up our ass, it could be. Yeah, it's really the if it works, then uh, it got me excited. Yeah. It was a statement that got me excited. So I really hope it's true, you know, Mm-hmm. because uh, more character concepts, I think, is good because for me personally, right, that's what multiclassing is should be for and is the that's the most fun way to use multiclassing for me. 
using multi-classing to create a character concept that you can't create otherwise, right? Combining two classes together to make a new thing that fits a certain story or a certain concept of a character you have. That's more fun. I'm not trying to multi-class just so I can do the biggest damage. I really don't care about that. I'm multi-classing because I want to make my magic knight character, but I want him to be like a magic-y samurai guy. So I'm doing this weird fighter wizard combo thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's where I think it's the most fun. So I'm hoping that's basically what they're saying there by saying more character concepts. That's I'm hoping that's what that means. God, Chris. No, no, hard to agree. That's that <laughs> to me. That is exactly why you multi-class is because you want you have a specific idea for a character and doing a unit like a unit class builds just does not work. It doesn't with work. It. Yeah. So you're like, well, uh, it's literally what, what I did with the non, right? It's like, oh, I want to do like this crazy yeah. sort of yeah, angelic yeah. Reaper character. So I took my, you know, start with Warlock. Uh, and then you're like, oh, well, I'm going to take some bits from this and then I'm going to you know, take some fighter to, to do some more swingy swings or, or to be a little bit tankier, you know, like. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully Mr. Perkins isn't lying to us because uh, if he is, I'm, I'm coming for you, bastard. Seconded. Uh, <laughs> On our way to your house. Yeah. Big homie. Um. And then they talked a little bit about how all of the species art, because uh, they they were like, you know, for the classes, you're they're getting like a splash art of the class being cool and, cla- you know, badass. They mentioned how all of the species art highlights the species in the in a scene, quote unquote, doing their thing. Uh, one of the examples they mention is halflings sitting around a dinner table with each other, which is very, you know, on brand for halflings. Um. I, I, I brought this one up specifically. I quoted this solely for you, Isaiah. 100% solely for you. Todd Kendrick <laughs> said, and the gnomes are definitely doing their thing. And then he kind of laughed. So I don't know what piece of the gnome art you're getting, but you must be getting a rather amusing piece of big gnome splash art. If they're not building a Gundam, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be that, but the I'm gnomes sp- are tinkers. <laughs> yeah, I want a like. Just give me a mech. I want a hundred fucking gnomes <laughs> building a 25 foot tall mech and then just being like, you laughed at us for calling us small for so long. Yeah, I now mean, they are small. I don't know if it's going to be a mech, but I have a feeling it's going to be something with that sort of energy to it. Yeah, it'll be. Yeah, it'll be tinkery or, or I would yeah. hope so. Yeah. Um. And then uh, they talk a little bit about how everyone's excited coming into the office and reviewing the books where they're currently at. And everyone's like sitting together. They're basically just being like everyone's coming into work, you know, excited to work on the big project, which, again, of course, we don't know. They could just be bullshitting us. But if they're not bullshitting us, that's a very good sign, in my opinion. A lot of (laughs) honestly, a lot of my um interest with this video a lot of like what got me a little more excited is that the the stuff they're talking about sounds like everyone's having a good time and like they're um positive about where the project's coming along that's the thing that got me interested you know less because there wasn't that many noodly bits in the video it was it was you know it was a lot of like vague we're talking about this talking about that but the fact that it seems like everyone's excited about the project is always a good sign yeah you you know you don't want to be coming into work and be like another day making this game i fucking hate (laughs) you know (laughs) because then the game's gonna come out and everyone who plays is gonna be like this game sucks Mm. um and then they have a little bit of there's a little bit of a wrap-up chat where todd uh todd kendrick's like do you guys take some time to smell the flowers and like play D D as a fan and they're like, you know, we don't get to as much as we can. But when we do, like Jeremy Crawford mentions, he's like, when I play my home game, we don't use any playtest rules at all. We just play the game as is because, you know, we want to just get that experience of just playing D&D as a fan. Um, and then they they talk a little bit about uh, having gone to Gary Con recently uh, and good seeing the sort of legacy of D&D with all the people at Gary Con and all the fucking old bastards who've been playing it for a million years and all that fun stuff. Uh, and then 
And then t- uh, fucking Mr. Kendrick really doing his job here and just drops us with just a mean, what a mean teaser, just an absolute sequel bait of a drop line here at the end. He says, the next time you, the next time you see us, we're going to be talking in depth about the player's handbook, a whole bunch for hours on end. That's where the video ends. Yep. I was like, my guy, you just dick teasing the shit out of me here. Hours on end? Yeah, I, I, okay. It's, it's good to know that I also, like, I was like, oh, good lord. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that yeah. mean? How many videos? You got me fucked up. <laughs> how many videos are about, like, like, are we about to just get fucking, like, a bazillion D&D videos on the YouTube channel? Like, what, what are we looking at here? Because he literally, he said hours on end. That's a, hours of that's content, a, yeah. That's like, a bold statement. That means, assuming he's not lying to us, minimum two hours. Minimum. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. If if it's true. I hope it's true. If it's true, yeah. What a dick tease. What a mad lad. Absolute madman. Uh, and that's, uh, that's the end of the video. Uh, it was like, it's, you know, uh, what is it, like 25 minutes long or so, something like that. Uh, if you yeah, want to go... Like Go watch it. As I said, it's on the DNT YouTube channel. Uh, good, good little watch. Um, and if you want, you know, speed it up to two times speed. Make it a ten minute video if you're one of those people. I, uh, it's twenty minutes. Uh, it, that is, I can't do that. It, I can't it, do like, it either. Actually, I, I like grind my teeth when I do it. I'm like, no, I, I stop. Yeah, it feels. Yeah, you the cadence the the cadence speed sounds weird. It's yeah, I get I get you. But, you know, some people do it. They're animals like that. Um, and yeah, that was that was the end of that there. So. Like I said, but after this video came out, I was definitely much more positive about the whole kitten caboodle. I felt more. You know, uh, I guess the I guess the marketing worked on me. I got a little excited marketing successful you know yeah no look i got i i also caught myself getting a little hype and yeah. being like wait no yeah i yet i yet i'm and i'm not even the guy who likes 5e <laughs> no true I'm like what the fuck something about it's the, it's the fucking mr mr draw craw and chrissy p there's the way they the way they sell it just fucking it, it hit different <laughs> it do uh, any any little any little closing comments? Uh, honestly, no, not really. I mean, like it, it appealed, like I said, it appealed to everything that I cared about, right? Like, yeah. I have always said how much I want to see more art in the game. You know, you you bring up really interesting, fascinating ideas with no visual representation and very little description, other than for a lot of spells, you point your finger at a thing and it dies. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um. I'm not even kidding. Check. You can check this. How many spells say you extend a finger towards a thing? And then it's just a lot. A miscellaneous way of dealing damage. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so to finally see that thing or to experience that thing, like halflings at a dinner table, you can sort of see that. But if, if a player actually sees it, that it gives them a whole new breadth of information on how to play that halfling. Oh, That's the stuff that I really word. care about. Hate you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that that got me really hype. Yeah, I'm just still worried to see about a lot of the mechanical stuff that I didn't like that they either walk back or kept the same or changed. It so uh, the worry is still there, but I'm I'm trying to not let it bug me. I mean, the worry's got to be there. As much. The worry has to be there until you see the final product, right? Like that's the only way to know at the end of the day. So. True. Yeah. There there is no 100% separating those. No. But yeah, it's a uh, that's pretty much it. It's pretty much where I'm at. That's where we're, that's 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 our uh, that's the 5e check-in as it were. We'll see where it goes from here. I have a feeling we're going to get 
Well, actually, maybe not. I don't know, judging by those files. I was about to say, I have a feeling we're going to get more videos, but we actually might not for a little bit until that hours on end comment comes to pass. So, yeah, we'll see. We got uh, we got five months before the rubber hits the road. All bets are off. Actually, it's more like I, I do want to. If they are, I, I'm fascinated to see when I when I start to be like, OK, I just don't want to hear about this anymore. Just release the product, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. There might be a little bit of that towards I'm, the end. I'm going to try to not be negative about this. I'm really giving it my best. But. <laughs> no, I mean, that's that's all. I think that's always true of any product. When the marketing gets to, like, at the peak of it, you get sick and tired. You know, it's like when a movie's about to come out and it's like trailer number four. And you're like, oh, my fucking God, I don't care. I'm going to watch the movie. Stop. Like, leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> yeah. All right, the, the, that has been us. If you enjoyed this nonsense, you may follow us on the Twitter, the Twitters, uh, and uh, don't forget to feed your cat and uh, water your dogs. Yes, water your dogs and, and groom your fish. <laughs> groom your fish. Yep. Advice of the day: groom your yeah. fish. Give me fish.